Something Under the Bed by Scott Pittock. Fade in, exterior, FBF Labs, morning. Gray clouds contrast against a sharp, angled, white building. Square tinted windows line the front. A worn sign, FBF Labs, with a lightning bolt through the words, hangs in the front. Interior, FBF Labs, lab, morning. The lab is big, sterile. White lab coats of scientists pop in the bright light as they crisscross each other to their respective tables. The scientists are focused. Office. Mathematical charts cover the glass walls. The thin, intense scientist, Shepard Ash, 33, works diligently at his desk. He scribbles down notes as he turns his attention to a tiny test tube with a creature, a cross between a scorpion and rat, submerged in greenish liquid. He flicks the tube. No movement. Frustrated, he focuses back to his notes. Exterior parking lot, night. Shepard walks the dark, empty lot. Small drones with spotlights whirl around in the distance. Shepard gets to his car. A spotlight whirls above him. He looks up into it, shields his eyes. The spotlight quickly whirls away. Interior house, living room, night. Shepard shuffles inside his meager house. Moving boxes tucked in the corners. Hallway. Shepard walks the hallway to a door. He taps and sequence 2042 on the keypad lock. Click. Bedroom. He pushes the door open, flicks on the light. The room is spotless, quaint, a grandmotherly feel to it. From under the bed, something scurries around. Its sharp nails scrape along the hardwood floor. Shepard kneels under the bed. Are you hungry? Tick, tick, tick from under the bed. It won't be long. I promise, it just takes time. Finding the right one always does. I'll prepare dinner. Kitchen. Shepard dumps a trash can on the floor. Rotten food, crunched up water bottles, and plastic bags puzzle the floor. He covers his nose from the stench. Bedroom. Shepard places a tray of the rotten food, plastic bottles, and bags at the bottom of the bed. He stands back, waits. The tray is yanked under the bed. Shepard walks to the door. He looks back to the sound of crunching and slurping from under the bed. Interior, FBF Labs, Cafeteria, Day. Amber, 28, redhead, delicate, angular. And Karen, 31, taller, a no-nonsense veneer, eat lunch at a table. It's weird. They eye Shepard at a table across the way. He writes in a notepad, his lunch not even touched. There's nothing weird about it. You know, he went out with Becky in conveillance five times, and not once did he invite her into his place. Maybe he's remodeling. Maybe he's afraid of pussy. Amber dismisses her comment. I know it's hard to believe, but it does scare some men. You know what they say, fear is your own worst enemy. We've only been out a few times. It's not normal. I haven't even invited him to my place. That's not your job. Speaking of job, I'm back at one, so can I please finish my lunch? Have you at least kissed? Are you still in junior high? Should be. I was getting more action back then. That's enough. Can you just let us progress? There's nothing weird about it. Shepard sees Amber from his table. He waves. She returns a smile. It's weird. That's all. Exterior house day. Trash day. Shepard drops a tiny trash bag on the curb in front of his squarish prefab house. He scans the rest of the prefab neighborhood before heading back to his house. His neighbor, Will, 44, rotund, bearded, dressed in a green Hawaiian shirt, waters strangely in plants by his house. He hurries to meet Shepard, still holds the running hose. Big into recycling, yeah? Shepard almost to his door, doesn't understand. And you're trash. I noticed you never have a lot of trash. Uh, come on, what's your secret? Secret? What makes you think I'm hiding anything? Uh, no, I don't think... You know what the average person consumes and wastes a day? Will doesn't know. 5.2 pounds. If anything, I'm doing something about it. I didn't mean to... Shepard turns to head inside. Hey, say, did you get a cat or dog? Which I have no problem with. Especially cats. That whole nine lives thing kills me. <laughs> Anyway, I'm only asking because the other day when I was preparing my new strain of Xerocuricums, I heard something in your room, like it was scurrying around, and it sounded big. No, I don't. Maybe something got into the attic. I'll check it out. Okay, awesome. Just want to let you know. That's what neighbors are for, right? Shepard doesn't answer. Hurries inside. Will shifts his feet while he studies Shepard's house. Water streams from his hose. Interior, house, bedroom, day. POV from under the bed. The door creaks open. Shepard's feet walk to the edge of the bed. Crouches down. You're not supposed to come out during the day. My neighbor heard you. I know he's nosy, but we can't risk it. If they find out, it will all be over. Everything we've worked so hard for, please understand. He exits. Doors shut. Tick, tick, tick.
Interior, restaurant, night. Shepard and Amber sit in an elegant restaurant. She looks radiant in her green dress. Leftovers scatter their plates as they're finished. A bottle of wine nearly empty. Amber sips her wine. Smiles caught between the two. What's the smile for? Just thinking. I really haven't said much tonight. Sorry, I've been preoccupied with work. <laughs> Once my head gets swimming. You don't have to apologize. It's kind of nice. So, how's your project going? Good. Some setbacks here and there, but that's to be expected. Sounds like it's a lot of work. You've been working on it for a while. Seems like forever. I think it's great that you haven't given up. That you haven't let the failures get the best of you. They're not failures. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean... They're keepsakes. And they're just as significant as the achievements. You, you'll never know when you might have a need for them. Sorry. I, I should have known better to pry. Proprietary, you know? He gets quiet. But I would love to see it when it's finished. Maybe. maybe. I'm just not sure how people will react. This one is special. It will change things. Well, no one likes change. It can be destructive, but sometimes disruption's good. Shepard couldn't agree more. The waiter approaches with a check and places a large carryout box on the table. Shepard shovels his leftovers into the box. He reaches over and shovels Amber's food over his. She looks on with curiosity. He shuts the box. You ready? Interior, Amber's car, night. Amber and Shepard sit in the, her car, which is parked in front of Shepard's house. A carryout box rests in his lap. Thanks for driving. A drone whirls above them. Its spotlight shines down on them from outside the car. They glance up as it whirls away. Seems to be a lot of drones out lately. Yeah, they're talking about another quarantine next week. Amber looks to his house. I'd invite you in, but my place is a mess. Maybe your place? I don't want to go to my place. I want you to invite me in. Shepard fiddles with the box. She gets out of the car. Exterior, house, night. Amber marches up to his doorstep. Shepard catches up to her. Amber, wait. Are you married? No. Do you have some, some ferals locked up? Maybe running some scopolamine operation in the basement? That's crazy. No, it's not. What I find crazy is you not allowing me to come into your home. I'm a private person, that's all. Listen, Shepard. I like you. You like me, I think. So at some point, this is going to have to become this. So why don't you just unlock your door and let me in? Interior, house, living room, night. The door unlocks and opens. Amber steps in. Nothing messy about his house. She notices the boxes. Going somewhere? Just getting things in order. Yeah, and quite the mess, too. Maybe I overreacted. She inches her fingers apart. Maybe a little. She steps toward the hallway. How about a tour? How about a drink? He bolts into the kitchen. Hallway. Amber walks the hall, passes one room packed with boxes. On the opposite side of the hall, she steps to an office. The office is cluttered with papers and folders. A green glow from a fish tank illuminates mathematical equations and diagrams of an obscure creature covering the walls. Amber steps in for a closer look, but Shepard shuts the door. Proprietary. Her nod takes her to the bedroom with the key padlock. What's in here? It's more comfortable in the living room. She taps the keypad. Is this your bedroom? Why do you have a lock on it? I have something valuable in there. You can never be too safe. I don't want to be safe. She leans against the door, waits. If you don't open this door, I'm walking out the front one, and that will be the last you see of me. She means it. Shepard steps to his door, gives her a look, then taps in the sequence 2042. Click. It pops open. Bedroom. The door creaks open. Shepard flicks on the light. Quiet. Amber steps past him and stands in the middle of the room. So, where's this valuable you're talking about? He doesn't answer. She sits on the bed. A seductive stare locks on him. Slightly spreads her legs apart. Shepard glances toward the bottom of the bed. He steps to her, grabs her hand. Let's go to the living room. She takes his hand and places it on her breast. He has to fight his desires and get her out. She lies back on the bed while pulling him on top of her. They begin to kiss. He tries to pull up, but she won't let him. Both in the moment, they turn over. On top, Amber erects herself, runs her hands over his body and hers. She begins to grind on him. I want you inside of me, Shepard. Her eyes flutter as he begins to push up her dress, scurrying on the floor. He breaks from the moment, looks off the bed. The scurrying wraps around the bed to the end. 
Lost in herself, Amber is oblivious to the scurrying. She begins to pull down the top of her dress. He tries to focus on Amber, but watches the end of the bed. The bed covering pulls towards the edge, as if something is pulling on it. Tick, tick, tick. Amber moans. The cover tightens more. Shepard throws Amber off him and stands. The scurrying disappears under the bed. What the hell? She pulls herself up, straightens, embarrassed. I'm sorry, it's better if we... If we what? I can't explain it, please. Someday you'll understand. Everyone will. No. Everyone's right. You're not normal. None of this is normal. He eyes the bottom of the bed. They widen as the bed skirt lifts. Please. What is wrong with you? Please. Stop no. it. Not here. I said stop it, Shepard. A thin, sharp-looking object, like a spider leg, begins to poke out from under the bed skirt toward Amber. Please. Stop it. The protruding object retracts back under the bed. Silence. Just Amber and Shepard. Relieved, but he can't look at her. She's done. Stomps out of the room. Kitchen, later. Shepard sits at the kitchen table, a pensive stare at the carryout box across from him. Exterior, country road, dawn. Shepard drives his car along a gravel road. Interior, Shepard's car, dawn. Shepard scans the dark, clouded countryside as he drives. It's not your fault. I should have never brought her into my home. You didn't know. Shepard drives past a field with a burning pyre. Two men in hazmat suits throw what look like bodies wrapped in cloth on top of the flames. Flames shoot to the sky. I promised that I would protect you, keep you safe. But I'm not sure how long I'll be able to do that. In his rearview mirror, he spots a pickup truck full of armed men in dark fatigue speeding up behind him. I don't know what's going to happen, but things are going to get worse. And there's not much more I can do. The truck pulls alongside Shepard. Soldiers wearing gas masks look over his car, then lock on Shepard. Truck steps on the gas, chews down the gravel road. Exterior, woods, dawn. Shepard's car parked. He gets out and walks to the trunk. He looks around before opening. He pulls out an extra large black duffel bag. It's heavy. The bag thumps on the ground. The bag rustles, as if something is poking to get out. Woods, later. Shepard drags the bag along the ground. The poking continues as he comes to a clearing. He clears brush from the ground, revealing a 4x4 four four metal lid with a lock. Shepard unlocks it, lifts the lid. Under the lid, a dark pit. Low, guttural moans emanate among the faint movement deep below. Shepard covers his nose from the stench. Tick, tick, tick on the bag. Shepard lays his hand on the bag. The movement stops. The ticking stops. Calm. He holds back emotion, grips the bag. Moan from the pit. Shepard yanks the bag into the pit, slams the lid shut. Roars and shrieks fight each other from the enclosed pit. Exterior, precipice, later. Shepard overlooks a wilted countryside. Eyes bloodshot from dried tears. He reflects on a future lost. Thunder cracks in the distance. A drop of water lands on Shepard's cheek, then another. A fiery microburst boils along the horizon. Rain begins to drop. He rubs the water between his fingers. His remembrance slowly turns to resolve. Interior, FBF labs, office, day. Shepard at his desk. The glass walls cleared of any charts and mathematical equations. A tiny test tube sits before him, empty. Shepard stares at a blank piece of paper. With a moment of determination, he grabs a pencil. Equations begin to fill the paper. Fade to black. The end.